We're back, ladies and gentlemen, in the Intel Extreme Master Season 10. Of course, in beautiful Shenzhen, China. I feel like they save the more beautiful shots for later in the day. I know, they to, keep getting more and more beautiful. Right? They just get better and better. The sun starts shining more and more. Do you know the one thing they don't capture very well? What is that? The humidity. That's true. You know, I was actually thinking that. So we, all three of us spent all three of us spent time this morning, like ironing our shirts out and whatnot. Yeah. But even, I mean, the AC is nice, right? We're not, it's not like we're hot. It's not like it's super sweaty or something inside. But you can still feel the humidity. Our shirts start like crinkling up a little bit, and they yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. straighten out anymore as the day goes forward. It is pretty humid here. It's, it's just overall very surprisingly compared to last year when I was here. Uh -huh. It's not that bad in the venue. Oh, was it worse in the venue? Oh. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad right now. If I now. remember correctly, I think Kolaris, like, fainted pretty much on day one. <laughs> Whoa. I'm pretty sure it was this. It was Shenzhen. I'm pretty, I might have to it fact sounds... check with someone else, but I'm pretty sure that halfway through the day, he was like, all right, I got to go to back to the hotel. I can't keep doing this. Yeah, and he well, just left. I mean, outside, it's super humid, right? As soon as we step outside, it's like we're swimming through oh, the street. Yeah. Like, we were actually walking, but you feel like your arms have a lot more weight on them and whatnot. Walking through, yeah, it's not too bad in the venue this year. And, you know, it seems like everyone else is pretty happy. Even the cosplayers, I mean, usually the cosplayers, it's very impressive how long they can stay at the conventions because generally yeah. there's so many people. But, yeah, everyone seems to be feeling pretty good and in good condition here. I feel like there's cosplayers arriving every 20 minutes because <laughs> they're always putting makeup on and putting more equipment and I don't know yep. what else, you know, cosplay stuff on <laughs> the gear. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is, there, is there a correct word? Just props? Well, it's not necessarily armor it's because just, it's just like outfit, props? you know. Props. Right? It's outfit. just the outfit. The yeah. The props, the but don't you notice every time you try to go to the bathroom here, there's, there's, there's a bunch of people sitting down putting more stuff on? Yeah, that's true. Unless they're changing outfit throughout the day. Whoa. They could Next be level. cosplaying as like three things. Yeah, maybe. But then, if they're changing, where's the original outfit going? Maybe they sell it to someone else, to one of their fans. There's like a trading system going on. <laughs> yeah. Maybe right. there's a trading system. Maybe there's an app. Like you, you like list your costume. You're like, I've worn this for the past three. It's three hours old. Got two drops of sweat on the shoulders. Who wants it? The cosplay eBay app. <laughs> <laughs> then you're like, but oh, well, I have a wooden sword. I'll trade for that, like shoulder armor or whatever. I need, I need to buy costume. something. I, I want to wear Me something too. tomorrow. Oh, I'll pick something out for you, Sean. Yeah, you will. Will you buy it too? Yeah. Well, well. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah, what's going on? Hey, you said yes. <laughs> Cheers, <All right>. mate. <laughs> well, that suddenly has decided the uh, just the quality of the costume. So there we go. But all right, I got you. I got you. We'll find something for this you. Is, this is when you text Carmack saying, Carmack, um, <laughs> I've. Can I can I expense this? <laughs> yeah, we got we got to change the funds a little bit here for IM, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll find something. But I mean, there seems to be a lot. There seems to be a lot going on here. I mean, uh, I was just talking to Snoot. I mean, we saw some pictures of it, but Snoot's like, yeah, you know, after my match, uh, yeah, there's just a ton of fans, like a ton of cosplayers coming up. Uh, you know, they want to take pictures with me and get my autograph. It felt really good. Yeah. Uh, so. He said, I believe, he was there for 30 minutes. So if I'm calculating this correctly, that should last him till at least like halfway through the semifinals. And then if he meets like more fans after his quarters, wow. he should pretty much win the whole weekend. That's I what so. I've decided. I hope yeah. so. I hope he got some more gifts, some more Yoshi gifts. <laughs> well, that would be pretty sweet. It's just like as his booth, next time he comes, it's just like all across the booth, just Yoshi's everywhere. Different types of gifts, man. <laughs> That's how you empower your mindset up. Just gotta, just gotta get, get yourself feeling good, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we joke around. About, I mean, we have, of course, like TLO and whatnot. Like always joking about, like, well, you know, I really like to get comfortable, but it matters. I mean, especially if you have to like travel, what, 20 hours, maybe more for I some mean, people. That's what I think. Rotterdam and where Rotterdam gets the majority of his casting strength from is because he walks <laughs> around the venue and there's so many Roddy fans and girl fans that <laughs> they all compliment him, and it has ah. the same effect as Snoop gets. <laughs> that, that could be it. We have to learn, gentlemen. After this one, while the game's going on, we have to take a little trek. We gotta fish for compliments, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that puts us in a completely different light uh, as esports commentators. But yeah, maybe you know whatever whatever makes the show better, right? We we do it for the people. <laughs> we we can fish for compliments. We can put out a little tweet, being like. Tell us, what was your favorite thing that I said today? We can compare how many replies we get throughout the day. Oh, that's that's not a good idea because that depends <laughs> on how many followers you have, Chobra. <laughs> and if you're someone like you, you don't get many replies. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, uh, you know what? Let's move onward. Let's move on with the actual tournament because that's what we're here for, not my Twitter followers. So we're going to look at Group B. We are not even in the middle. We're at the very oh, focus, gentlemen. Sorry, Attention. Sorry. We're here for the very last match of Group B. 
and it is going to be Classic versus Rain. I mean, who would have thought Snoot was going to end day two of I Am Shenzhen, Intel Stream Master Shenzhen, and go home saying, I was responsible for making Classic and Rain fight against each other for the last remaining spot in the groups. Oh, yeah. You get feel so happy with that. Like, yeah. Snoot, you're coming into this, and there's not really any expectation. You're just like, yeah, yeah. I just beat three... But three champions between them in the top Korean leagues in the world. Yeah. He's probably feeling pretty good with himself. But Classic and Rain, this is yeah. the PvP. I've actually been thinking about how this is going to play out for like the last three or four days. I've been thinking these guys are going to play at some point this weekend. And it's going to be freaking amazing. It's going to be so cool to watch. Yeah, that's the, the most important thing you said there. They were meant to play somewhere this weekend, yet it's in group stages. Yeah. You know, it's that, crazy. That's, it's, it's massive. And, and Snoop really did put a put a complete twist on this group. It wasn't meant to be like this. I know there's definitely a lot of fans that believed he could advance from this group, but at the end of the day, Rain and Classic, nine times out of 10 were meant to advance from this group, but it didn't happen, and now they must uh, eliminate one of each other. Yeah, I mean, Rain said it himself. It was like, well, you know, I lost to Snoop, but I figured Classic will beat him, and then I would get my chance, I would beat him, and it, again, it would still be Classic and me, like yeah. I expected from the beginning to move on, but it's not that case anymore. Rain sounded pretty miffed that he had to play against Classic at all here in the group stages. I mean, I would be too, but I think he was bringing out that other factor that maybe some other people forgot is that they know each other so well. They used to be teammates. I mean, they used to be much closer. Or they used to practice all the time together. It's not just about like being the top players. Yeah, There's yeah. a lot more to it right now in this rivalry. And the thing is, is uh, as a lot of old teammates, even though they're not necessarily teammates anymore, they still have each other on, you know, Skype or whatever. Yeah. They're using Korea. They still have each other on Battle.net. They can still message each other and still right. train with each other outside of team practice. It's, it's not true. like they never play with each other <laughs> anymore. So. Uh, it's the only bad thing about this match is that it's the best of three. Yeah, well, it, it is it is a little bit unfortunate, but hey, that's what's going to come down to. Someone's going to fight for their life in this best of three. Again, Rain versus Classic. Now, Rain. We just spoke with him. Uh, he looked, you know, he looked like he gathered himself back a little bit. Still seemed to be haunting him a little bit in his matchup against Snoop. But uh, he also talked about how he has just so much experience in both the ups and downs. And here he is just going through yet another best of three. I mean, for him, it's just that's the mindset he has. Just another match. Yeah, he looked so good in that last one, too. He really just, that was pretty one-sided. It wasn't close. Yeah, the yeah. tiniest mista mistakes from Yonghua. And he just kind of was like, no, you're, you're, you're out. I'm not giving you any room. And that's, that's what players of this caliber do. But going up against Classic, it's going to be the same, same two-sided dice. And PvP, especially during that first seven or eight minutes, it's going to be very interesting to see if Rain changes up the style he wants to do. Because I felt like his openings were somewhat standard and very safe, straightforward openings against Yonghua. I feel like he might bring out some of that more kind of crazy PvP, which Artosis was talking about he's been showcasing lately. Yeah, well, Classic on the other side. Rain, we talked with Rain a little bit about it too, but Classic, he said, well, Classic likes to try some crazy things in practice, but in tournament, he plays, again, that kind of stable, defensive Protoss type. Do you think we're still going to see that? Because Rain said it might come down to all the builds. To be honest, and I think Rain's right, and anything can happen when you know each other in a Protoss best of three. We saw how crazy that last map got yeah. in the last game. Anything can really happen between these two. I think that one thing we, we I think that is a bit of an advantage for Rain is that he had a match in between his loss versus Snoot, hmm. which is always a good bounce back feeling, it's right? True. Whereas Classic did look pretty beaten up after he lost versus yeah. Snoot and hasn't had anything since that. Hmm. So I feel that Reigns uh, are going to be slightly favored for me in this series, but it's great to see GSL versus Star League, That's the two true. most prestigious leagues going head to head, the two champions of each other going head to head here. Yeah, I mean, these guys, they hold those championship titles. They are kind of the most revered players right now in Korea. And now it comes down to this in Shenzhen. Who's going to be the last one standing? Not little, It's not the finals here. It's the final match of groups in Group B. So who will go on to the quarterfinals to join Snoot? Let's find out. Rain versus Classic for our final match of the day. Presenting it will be the Protoss lovers. It will be Rotterdam and Artosis. Thank you very much, lovely gentlemen at the desk. And I have to say that was some awesome in-depth PvP analysis. 12 minutes and I haven't heard the word Stalker, Phoenix or Immortal <laughs> once. Well done, lads. Well done. Indeed. They are, they are truly <laughs> wonderful, those three. Well, uh, our first map going to be Terraform, it looks like. Yeah. And the game has already started. So let's go ahead, jump in and introduce these players. Up in the top left, the current SSL champion, it is classic. And can you believe? Yeah, exactly. There's no freaking rain? way that Rain would ever send. Oh, but they had the nameplate wrong. That was Rain, guys. Mate. And over here in the right bottom side. That's Rain still. Okay, there we go. Plus, oh, damn it. Of Terraform. 
We have a Red Brothers player who's missing a pylon. It is classic. But is he missing a pylon? He is missing a pylon. Well, well uh, the pylon is missing home. Not, yeah, it's just <laughs> not where you would think. Something that we hadn't seen yet in the previous PvP. Rain is, of course, not much of a proxy himself. Classic on the air, on the end. Has a little bit of a reputation for this. Yeah, he's definitely had some proxy games. I seem to recall a, a series against Parting once upon a time that was pretty cheeky. But uh, this is just a single proxy gate, so should be seeing some Zealots into Stalker. Yeah, probably Zealot, Zealot, Stalker, right? That's mm -hmm. the idea behind this build. Zealot, Zealot, Stalker. And then most of the time they like to follow it up with a tree gate as well. It's a very, uh, it's a tricky build. And in the past, you know, I always looked at these builds and I was like, man, I don't understand how these high-level Protoss players are doing this and why it is ever working on this level. But quite recently, I've actually found myself losing to this way more often than I used to. Mm. And I'm really surprised by it because I feel it shouldn't be as strong as it is. And these players should all be good enough to deal with it. But it's just... You know, the early game is so fragile in PvP. Mm. One stalker, one time getting an extra slice from a Zalot, or, yeah. you know, not getting your volley off when you should have been able to get your volley off. And it's almost game over. It gets really tricky. Will this probe spot the Zalot? Oh! Yes, it will. Oh, that's actually... Well, he didn't actually see it, I don't think. And maybe he thought it was a probe? Well, he has a Zalot building. So, let's see here. Is he chronoing that gate? No, he's uh, not chronoing it. All right, there we go. It does start the chrono. So he does show this first Zealot, and luckily for Rain, he did already have a Zealot building. So that's going to help him out quite a bit here, but has to be very careful not to lose many probes here. Yeah, he's just losing mining time so far. Hasn't actually lost a single worker yet. That second Zealot is oh. out. So this is that kind of, this is the one moment where Classic really wants to at least do a little bit of economic mm. damage. It doesn't have to be ridiculous, but you know, you, you want to get a probe or three at least. Yeah. Otherwise, you know your opponent is going to be too rich. That's two workers already, oh, and man. there's still quite a bit of HP on these Zealots. Yeah, uh, and uh, you know, as he does go ahead and up into a Stalker, you can push right back up that ramp. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. Here he goes, going forward oh, and... Man. Gonna have to be some pretty fancy micro here from Rain. He does have that mothership core, luckily. Of course, he can kite it with the stalker. Yeah, he's waiting for his second stalker, and that is the moment where Classic truly wants to fight because it's then two stalkers against one stalker and a mothership core, and it's much easier to micro your stalkers than a mothership mm. core. How much energy are we looking at? Are we looking at enough energy for a folded overcharge? It's no, gonna be yet. difficult. He's gonna have a, a very scary 10 to 15 seconds, and this is the moment where Classic really wants to do some serious work. Well, he's going to be up to uh, that Photon Overcharge in about 15 in-game seconds right now. He is pushing forward, uh, getting on top of those probes. A lot of really weak probes right now. Gets a couple of uh, slices up on that Stalker. Actually, very nice, but one Stalker extremely low on the side oh. of Classic. Did not end up losing it, though. Yes, he did end up losing it. So it's a Stalker for a Stalker. I kind of feel that this is being... Oh, okay, I don't like that that Stalker is so low in HP for Rain. He's going to lose oh, that one man. as well. This Ooh. actually worked out really well for Classic. Yep. Classic even has the probe lead at this point. Oh, God. He went for a sentry. Uh, one Stalker dies. Mothership Core dies as well. I actually don't mind losing my Mothership Core that much when I just use Photon Overcharge mm. because you can rebuild it and it will start with 50 energy. That sentry is actually going to uh, push that Stalker into range of Photon Overcharge as well. <laughs> mm. and, well, in the meantime, trying to get some, of the, some pylons up right here. Zealot actually chasing down that probe right now. Not sure that oh, that's God. the most efficient thing he can do. He really needs to stop these pilots uh, from working in. Rain is in trouble. I actually think that Rain is in a lot of trouble because these three stalkers are going to be walked in before I think he has enough damage to do mm. something about it. Now, Photon Overcharge is going to expire real soon. But Rain will be able to warp in three stalkers on his own. So it's basically five units against four, but these four have more micro potential. Well, four stalkers versus four stalkers, pretty nice. He does have a zealot oh. still up a little bit. He needs to bring that zealot down to join this fight. He could push this back way faster if he had a zealot during all of this. So definitely a misplay here from Rain. Yep, so far Rain handled that better than Classic, though. We're even without the zealot, I do agree with you totally. He should have been using that zealot. Now we have one sentry that's going to be picked up as well. Rain has no more gas. Why does Rain have no gas? He remade a mothership. No, he does. No, no. Classic has a mothership core. Why yeah. does Rain have no gas? Well, because he was not mining all of his probes on gas. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it looks like this is actually just probably going to go to Classic. I mean, with three Stalkers left over at GG, uh, you know, I here's the thing. I think that Classic did that well. Uh, I think it was working for him.
pretty much since the beginning, but if Rain had brought down his Zealot during that four soccer versus four soccer, I think this entire game looks different. He holds that, because and I was, think it just goes forward the game. Yeah, totally agree, because he was even doing quite well there, because he didn't have, uh, Classic didn't have the same micro potential as yeah. Rain, because Socks, he would pull back, they would be stuck near the edge of yeah. the main base, so they would still die, while Rain was able to send one of his own Stalkers he, very deep into his main base. He even had a sentry yeah. and that Zealot, so it's like, he could have forced those Stalkers back so much faster, worked on Stalkers ever being warped in. In fact, Classic may have not even tried to warp in there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's pretty surprising. That's a pretty gigantic uh, mistake there by Rain. And this is that moment where you wish you were in Gold League and always press F2. <laughs> even if you were in a GSL champion, you if go. you would have pressed F2 there, you would have selected this Zealot. We're going to head over to a very small commercial break, and after that, we'll be back with the final Stark of Two matches of the day. Classic is up 1 0 over Rain. Welcome back to Intel Extreme Masters Shenzhen. This is the Season 10 opener, Rotterdam, and this is the end of our first broadcast day here. Group B is about to be decided no. between the defending champions of SSL and GSL. Yep, two Because of, uh, they couldn't win the group. <laughs> two of the most prestigious leagues in the Stark of Two universe out there. But now they are fighting for their tournament live at the Intel Extreme Masters Shenzhen. You know, these opener videos, they mention it. They just keep being cooler. They keep making them look more awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm also wondering, where are these places? Because I've been walking around the Tosas and <laughs> I've <laughs> seen the Family families. Market, but I haven't seen those beautiful places. Well, I mean, Family Mart is about the best that you can find in any city, <laughs> in my opinion. But uh, oh, it's, I've seen some nice stuff. I've seen the tall buildings. By the way, I was so close with my guests. The building that I mentioned, which is called the KK100 Tower, yeah. is the 13th tallest tower in the world, or building. Wow. So I was pretty spot on. I said between 13 and 19. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. That's. I don't know why you would know that. That's really actually, just so weird that you would like <laughs> have that much knowledge about the tall buildings. Uh, I like to Google that kind of stuff every now and then when I'm bored. When there is no StarCraft on or Tosas and I'm bored, like I like to Google about stuff that I yeah. find interesting. And I do that on Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Sometimes you know, you I, just read something that you find fun, and I find tall buildings fun. <laughs> I don't know why. That's pretty <laughs> sick, man. I, I do the same exact thing. But anyways, here we are, guys. This is game number two on Coda. And we have here in the bottom right, losing that first game, he's got to win here. It is Rain. Of course, representing my insanity, just having won a Home Story Cup as well as GSL Coda S. Going up, actually, both of these guys have won basically in SSO and GSO in their life. I mean, when Ray yeah. won, it was OSL, but, yeah. you know, a little bit similar. Over here on the left top side, representing SKT1, it is classic. Former teammates of each other, classic probably looked up to Rain for a long time when it came to being amazing in Heart of the Swarm. Took a little while, but eventually Classic was able to get his own GSL victory too. Well, I actually had it way before Rain, but his first big victory, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. Who did Classic beat again in the final? That was Sue, right? Uh, oh, in the GSL? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was Sue. <laughs> he, he beats his teammates in finals. That's what he does. <laughs> this KT won quite a dynasty. But it uh, doesn't look like any shenanigans so far, Rotterdam. Nope. I, and I must say, I really don't want to make any excuses for Rain because he's such a world-class player and he should always be able to perform. But I feel that um, just like, not uh, necessarily in-game, even though in-game maybe a tiny bit, but I feel especially in real life, his physical appearance, he seems to be a little out of it. You yeah. Know? It doesn't seem like he's really here. But he's been in China now for a while. And earlier this morning at breakfast, I felt he looked a lot fresher with more energy than he currently does. And, I actually felt the playing conditions are quite okay at this venue. Yeah, I, I've absolutely. been in China in 2011 as well, and back then it was ridiculously hot, and mm. it was rough. I kind of like this place, you know? There's air conditioning, it's cool. Yeah, this is not so bad in here at all, so I, I definitely have to echo that. He does look like he's a little bit tired, but maybe just these games are wearing him down. They've been they've been pretty tough ones overall, losing to Snoot and whatnot. And of course, you know, for us, we're busy all day. We're busy with Group A, but maybe he's not like interested in Group A at all, and he's just focused on his own game so yeah. only. Um, I believe Classic has proxied his second pile, and I'm going to be able to check that real yeah. quick. And he's going to drop a target. He even drops it. No, wait, that's a what? That's a gateway? A okay. proxy gateway. But thanks for watching. No, 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 no. <laughs> not yet, guys. Told you guys. I know some people in production hate PvP, but I will personally use my veto. We will broadcast this <laughs> final series. 
So, proxying the second gateway is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, probably should see some chrono boosted units out of it. Otherwise, there's no reason to proxy it unless you're just hiding it, in which case you wouldn't need to proxy. You could just hide it in a corner. But yeah, uh, it's very strange because I don't feel that this is necessarily going to hit a whole lot quicker. I don't really see him well, proxying single unit or uh, chrono boosting I, single units out of this gateway. I think he will. Like, it, there's no other reason I think to put it there. It, I, you know what I'm thinking this might be, Rotterdam, is you know, two gate. Like a lot of people just go two gate. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh I could do like a five stalker rush here and get you. You know, just kind of make you play a little bit safer. But maybe he just does that five stalker rush that people don't really do that much anymore because it is so close. I kind of feel that uh, he should at least. Oh, Ray is going to be able to. No. Oh my god, you're so close, Rain Man. That's just unfortunate. Well, maybe the Mothership Boy is going to spot it. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hot, hot, hot. All there right. You go. Well, that's a big deal to find that <laughs> right now. It's going to have to run away with that Mothership Core. Can't afford to lose that. You know, if I spot that, I mean, if I look at my own setup right now, if I'm Rain, I'll be like, okay, what does this even mean? Well, yeah, right? no one knows what it means, but I think I'm in an okay position over here because I have double gate, I have a lot of stalkers, yeah. I have a mothership core. Uh, I'm gonna get one more, so Rain is gonna get one more gateway, so he's actually the one going up to three gates before Classic. You know, he caught the mothership core, which is pretty important, but I think being on the high ground uh, with that third gate being quicker, I think he'll be fine anyways. Yeah, the mothership core is not that. It's just, uh, yeah, it, but he's just not gonna be able to do it, but I think yeah. you're right, you know. A, a Rain should have five stocks over there. This is why I didn't like the previous pylon, by the way, in Rain vs. Jungwa, because I just think if you're not actually using your stalkers for map control, you're gonna end up losing that pylon almost immediately. I love how Rain pushed those units back immediately. He's like, nope, no high ground vision for you. Mm. And immediately killing off a stalker, he should be able to get that pylon as well. Oh, fact, Mothership Core! Oh man, that would be huge if he killed that. Oh, oh. just barely does not get that. Uh, but Rain is completely fine. And I would say after all this, I mean, Rain came out completely fine at the end of the day. And he even has, uh, you know, a Twilight. Yeah, the Twilight is a little late and he didn't research Blink yet, but I do agree with you. This could have been a lot worse for Rain and instead it actually turned out pretty damn all right. He's going to send his Mothership Core into the main base of Classic. He's probably wondering what else got Classic going on because this doesn't really make any sense. Why are you proxying a gateway if you're not really committing to anything? Mm. Well, it's some, uh, definitely some next level PvP over here where I feel both players are just trying to outsmart each other. A yeah, bit. it's, you know, every little mind game. Like he said in that interview, uh, it, that's probably what he thinks it'll come down to. And as far as these builds go, I mean, I actually like where Rain's spot is at for sure over Classics. Yeah, I mean, especially with the Nexus halfway down. Yeah. I feel that's everything. Uh, Classic as Nexus is going to be a little bit later. I'm going to take a look at the work account during all this. It's 24 on either side. But what I like is that Rain is going to have the option to make some plays in the upcoming minutes. And if you guys wonder why, well, in PvP, when you're both working with the same units, it's really hard to make plays. Mm. But A, Rain is able to clean up this gateway in the pylon. And then he's going to get an Observer eventually or a Hallucination. And he's going to be able to blink into the main base with four Stalkers and maybe just oh. pick up oh, Lens of Lucy. Losing the Mothership Core, that's unfortunate, but yeah, I wouldn't be too sad about it. Yeah, no. it, it doesn't like cause a game loss, like losing yeah. the Mothership Core really sometimes can, but I mean, that was that was unneeded for him to lose that right there, right before his Blink Stalkers finish and get across the map, so. I don't really, like, the more Blink Stalkers that Rain makes, the more of a tricky position he puts himself in. This is a massive scout for Classic, because Rain is not just using Blink for map control and maybe a little bit of harassment. With the amount of Stalkers that Rain is producing, I feel he actually wants to push the issue very hard and at least cancel this expand, if not win the game. Yeah. But I'm not sure, I don't really think that's you don't, necessary. You don't bring your sentries unless yeah. you're trying to win, and I think he scouted what's going on. He scouted that it's a mortal tech, so he knows his Blink Stalkers win the uh, battle. I'm worried, though. I'm very worried for uh, for Rain. To be honest, I like it. If he executes perfectly, he should be able to do a lot of damage here. Okay, force field on the ramp. Okay, that's, well. a, that's a strong force field right there, and he does get Nexus Cannon off, but this is a hell of a lot of Stalkers. Some should of them again hit by that immortal for a moment. Classic should have focused the sentries, and he's mm. not doing that, actually. He could have used Photon Overcharge to force one to focus down one sentry. Instead, he's just picking a fight on random Stalkers. A lot of Stalkers are quite low on HP. A forward blink <laughs> being used by Rain. Oh, man. man. He would have killed the sentries. He's just slaughtering him here. Yeah, he really did need to kill those. That, that, this is just us. won the battle. Yeah. You know, that's it. It's just like, hey, your immortals aren't in this, and I have blink, and you don't. It's you could have two nexuses there with nexus candy, be fine. It, nice, nice play there by Rain.
Nice play by Ray, but I also felt Classic could have handled that a little bit better. I don't even think he needed to put his uh, Immortal on the high ground or on the ramp. I have no idea why he did that. Yeah. I felt he should have just got two Zealots and put everything on the low ground. He had an Observer on top of the army of Rain, so it's not like he was worried about Rain blinking at the yeah, main base. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point, because he killed a Mothership Core, so he yeah. knows there's no way for him to blink in, which means the Immortals don't need to be on the high ground. Wow, Rain is so aggressive over here, but for some reason Classic keeps shooting at the Zealot. I swear to God, those Immortals shot like six times at those two Zealots, <laughs> so these Stalkers did way more than they ever should have done. And now he's going to blink forward, he's going to get the Immortal as well. Both Immortals went down, and then this might actually be it, because Classic mm. has no more Immortals, and he doesn't have Blink. Man, Classic really messed up in the last two minutes of this game. Yeah, I definitely do have to agree with you there. Uh, it's a, a simple thing like that, your Immortals being out of position, and you can absolutely lose a PvP. It's a, a very unforgiving matchup yeah. if you're out of position. No, for sure. And it's very tricky as well. It's like, obviously we have a lot of the information, and you know we have no pressure over here, so we can just analyze every single move that these two players make well I know that if I would go up against them you know I'd get shreked in every shape or form it would yeah. even be funny but when we're sitting here you know we're gonna try to judge them because we know what they're capable of we're not trying to be critical because we, we think that they you know that they're not as good as we think they are like no we actually know that they're absolutely phenomenal players and classic just made three or four critical arrows there in a row which a player of his caliber a GSL champion and this yeah. champion shouldn't make yeah. those were most of them were even unforced arrows it wasn't really Rain making an awesome play and Classic being caught off guard. It's like, Classic, it's in your right, you know, or it's in your ballpark to mm. shoot down those sentries. It's in your ballpark to see all those units running into your natural. Why are you not putting your units in a better position? And then also shooting at the Zealot while well, could have been focusing on the Stalkers. Those are just unforced errors on the side of Classic. Certainly is the case. And from here, how do you even try to catch up? I'm surprised he's even making a forge, to be honest with you, Rotterdam. Uh, I feel like the, the amount of damage he took there is critical. And his best chance at this point, I feel like, would be some sort of all-in. But making that forge tells us that he feels otherwise. Uh, it's just very hard to make a decision to go all-in when you have nothing to break force fields, right? Uh, yeah. So Classic looks at this, he's like, well, I could march across the map with my two Immortals and, you know, hope for a Hail Mary play or something, but how am I ever going to walk up that ramp if Rain doesn't allow me to? Well, I probably am not, so... Well, I uh, think that, yeah, against someone like, oh man, the, I love the aggressive trading here, fantastically done. Uh, I mean, what we see from Classic here, he's like targeting with the, uh, the Immortal, which is... I mean, sometimes it can work out, but yeah. against someone like Rain, it's almost better just to make sure that they he stays at max range and attacks anything. And once again, that Immortal was just blocked by Classic's own unit. Uh, I, I can imagine he's a little bit surprised by his attack. Rain is really pushing the issue so hard over here. Mothership Core uh, is going <laughs> to drop a time warp on this as well. And Rain is just going to blink into the main base. He's going to unpower a couple of these production facilities. Well, he can do anything <laughs> from here, man. Uh, yeah. Blink stalkers Jesus. beat anything at this point. <laughs> so In these numbers, I guess they do. Uh, yeah, we should be seeing a GG here in just a second, which means we'll be going on to game number three. Very well played by Rain. I do, I, I got to say, I really did like his choice to just make a bunch of Blink Stalkers go across the map against... The thing is about, like, Immortal, like, a Robotech alone, there's no mobility with it. And in PvP nowadays, in the early game, mobility beats everything. No, I totally agree uh, to that point, but normally when you make this many Stalkers, you're really committing as well. Like, in the end, mm. it turned out great for Rain because he was able to trap those Immortals on top of the ramp and he killed the Nexus. But if he doesn't get the Nexus there, then suddenly Rain is stuck with a lot of Blink Stalkers that in a real big straight-up engagement are not going to do a whole lot for him. Maybe he will find ways mm. later to make those units pay for themselves, but I thought it was a pretty... You know, a pretty ballsy decision. I, I didn't really dislike it. I was just surprised by it. Then I was very surprised that it just used all of them to straight up attack into the natural and even more surprised that it worked so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, aggressive trading with Blink Stalkers can be very, uh, very effective in early game PvP. They kind of beat everything, so that's why it is so popular. But it looks like our next map going to be Coda. Any thoughts on this map for PvP? I don't think so, because we already played. We just played Coda. Coda was oh, literally God, yeah. the previous map. So I think it's going to be a different map. I'll let them know. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know we all love Coda. And I know that these guys love Coda, but I don't think we should play Coda again. Uh, twice in a best oh, of three. Oh, we should do Coda again. No, 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 no. Uh, it's going to be... Oh, my God. I think the final map is actually going to be Bridgehead. And 
You know, out of all the maps, I've played a lot actually. The last I played one day before I think I went to Home Circle Cup. I played like 12 hours on the new maps. Then I went to Home Circle Cup, didn't play for four or five days, came back, and I had a full week to practice on these maps. And Bridgehead is the only one, especially when it comes to PvP, that I don't know what is the norm over here. Like I have <laughs> absolutely no idea because the double destructible rocks in the back of your main base and then that weird ramp into your main base, it just makes it a crazy map. Like, mm. I have no idea what is the standard here in PvP. Absolutely no idea. Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised if these guys stay on uh, one base for quite some time here. Yeah. I kind of feel that maybe that is the thing to go because you can blink your stalkers past the destructible rocks without having yeah, any yeah. high ground vision or whatever. So, you know, obviously it's tricky to blink stalks into a natural. It just all sounds so weird, but it's true. That's actually yeah. the way this map <laughs> plays out. So I think you're right. I wouldn't be too shocked either to maybe see some cheeky proxy play again. Yeah. This is definitely the type of map where Classic might just proxy a gateway once more. Mm. I, I, I think uh, proxying a Stargate, though, might be a little bit better. I would love to see some uh, Oracle into Blink type of play for this map. I think that's a great fallback, but uh, mm -hmm. we will see. Looks like the map is loading up, guys. Rain vs. Classic. This is the final game of the day here at Intel Extreme Masters Shenzhen Season X. I'm giggling already, Mectosis, and you know why. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone you guys else? don't know, though. Yeah. Oh, now you know. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Over here on the left top side. Wow, it's, this time it is actually the man that's representing my insanity. We thought he never does this, but he does. It's Rain, and he's missing a pro. So I think Rain is just on the same page as me right now, and he's like, you know what? Bridgehead is, Bridgehead <laughs> yeah. is crazy. It's too hard to uh, <laughs> predict exactly what to do. Well, his opponent over here in the bottom right getting proxied. It is Classic. <laughs> classic is probably like Rain out of all people. <laughs> the moment that, he, that he's going to spot this is like, well, what Rain? This is like the first time since 2012 that Rain has proxied anything. Seriously, I'm trying to think last time I saw him proxy gate in PvP. I don't even remember a Rain game where he proxy two gated. No, me neither. And uh, uh, the way his probe is just sitting there. We might be seeing it. I, I, I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna take gas though. Like nobody just proxy zealots anymore. So I think it's gonna be. It might be a double gate core proxy. Oh, so uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. zealot core. Just and the non-stop stalkers coming out. Yeah. Yeah, that seems more like a rain build. Okay, I can totally go with that. And then, one. and then the python on the high ground. Someone actually did this against me on leather a few days ago, but I got a little bit fortunate. It can be a tough one to stop oh, if your opponent oh uh, just executes God. really, really well. Okay, well, that's really, really good for Classic to scout that. I kind of want to see the player reactions right now, you know? Yeah, yeah. that would be nice. Uh, but uh, we can imagine that Rain is like... <sighs> yep. And Classic is probably like, hmm, not bad. What, uh, a, what a scout. Yeah, he's like, okay, I better win this. <laughs> yeah, 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 the ball is in my... This is kind of, there's a lot of pressure. On, if yeah. you're Classic right now, on one end you're happy, and on the other end you're just telling yourself, don't mess up, don't mess you up, don't mess up. You still have the micro really well. Yeah. Like, he has two gates right near you very, very quickly. He's going to have his units out quicker. Yep. He's going to have his core up quicker. So, like, you have to really know how to counter this, and that oftentimes involves pulling up a few probes and whatnot. Yep, uh, so most likely Classic is going to do the exact same thing as Rain is doing, except for the point that Artosis just mentioned. He's going to pull a few workers once or twice, and you just don't want to lose too many. Mm. Getting a cheeky surround on the Zello would be one hell of a way to start this. Ooh, that could be a tough one, though. Yeah, that was a good pullback on the Zello. Uh, yep, and I love how Rain kept his probe around as well. He's like, no full wall up. There we do get that pylon on top of the ramp as mm. well. So the two stalkers are going to be a little bit faster for Rain, and that's truly when the micro party starts. The work account is 17 against 12. So keep this in mind, guys. It's okay for Classic to lose up to, I would even say, six probes. Yes. That is acceptable. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and he's got to know that he's bringing his probes up right now. But we do have Rain targeting down as much as he can on these stalkers. Oh, wow. He really needs to kill off his opponent's stalkers to get that big victory. Classic did pretty damn well so far, mm. but now he did end up losing his Zalot. Classic is going to have stalker number three and four, a little bit four. Rain only has one stalker on the way. He didn't start the other stalker in time because he didn't have gas. So there's going to be a moment with four stalkers against <gasps> three. But Classic is hitting a lot of shots there. Or excuse me, Rain. Yeah. yeah, I know, right? He's functioning. It's hard to yeah. commentate. But oh my god, losing that stalker is a gigantic deal. And nicely, uh, Classic does push him back for now. 
Rain just hasn't done the damage that he yeah. needs. No, he needs to do way more than this. And I actually kind of feel this Stalker works against him in a way that, like, now his Stalkers have to line up. Rather yeah. than you can micro them in a horizontal line, they have to stand vertical. He's going to lose his high ground vision. And with this, Rain is proxy is in so much trouble. He's probably going to try to test the waters one more time when he has Stalker number four and five out. But like oh, you mentioned... I, I don't think he goes up the ramp at four and five. I think you got to assume that Classical hold that. I if he goes up the ramp at 4 and 5, I think the game's over. He's got to try, man. He really has to try. You can't sacrifice two gateways in your core. Well, we'll see what he can do here. Doesn't really get too much done. Looks like he might lose yet another Stalker from trying to push up. I was critical of Classic of the way that he was defending on Coda, but I must say he's been doing absolutely phenomenal over here on Bridgehead. He really handled that mm. so well. Ray made it difficult as well when the Zella chased his own Stalker, but Classic handled this, you know, with so much calm and just beautiful micro mm. all around. It's not a home stand over yet, but, you know, if you're Rain <laughs> right now, you know that the time is ticking. You know, it's 20 probes against 11. Yeah. Ray needs an absolute miracle. That is that is a fact, Rotterdam. I don't even know what he would want to do from here. He doesn't have economy. He doesn't even have warp gate started. Like, this is so hard to pick up a victory. His economy is so weak. We've actually had uh, uh, probes being made by Classic during this off and on. So he's up to 21 against 12, which is just an insane difference. And uh -huh. Crane is just going to GG. And that's it. Classic takes the game and the match, meaning he will move into the bracket. Wow, and Rain is suddenly back on uh, planet Earth again after, you know, being on Cloud9 for a little while, yeah. winning the GSL, winning Home Story Cup, coming to Shenzhen probably with very high hopes and expectations, but not today, it's what Snoot said, and then in the end, Classic as well. Man, Classic is a guy, he has proxied so much in his life, you don't want to proxy this guy, he knew how to deal with it. Well, you know, I think Rain was counting on the fact that Classic might not scout him mm -hmm. because Rain so rarely proxies. But uh, in this case, you know, he gets caught as soon as he cheeses, and that has to that has to hurt his Rain yeah. because you spend so long building up your image <laughs> as a conservative <laughs> macro player, and then that happens. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, I think you're spot on. Chobra is on the desk with the second place player that has advanced from Group B, and that is of course Classic. So boys, take it away. Thank you very much, Roddy. Yeah, after a bit of a grueling match, I mean, sure, now the length wasn't necessarily grueling, but Classic is the man who will get to join us here on the desk. That's actually the biggest privilege here yeah. in the Decider matches that they get to sit here and chat with us uh, before we wrap <laughs> up the day. And Classic pulling through, knocking down the GSO champion, uh, the reigning GSO yeah. champion in Korea in rain. And, you know, it's got it's got to be, it has to have been a roller coaster. So I just really want to see. We saw him smile for the first time today as he came to the desk. So, Kim Do Sons, I'm going to go to the going to go to the desk. I'm 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 going to go to the 쉽게 올라갈 줄 알았는데 생각보다 되게 잘 하시더라고요 선수 선수가 그래서 되게 오늘 힘든 하루였던 것 같아요. Yeah, classic just saying, well, uh, you know, I, I wasn't feeling too well. I was a little bit under the weather, so uh, I was worried before the whole group started coming in. Uh, but then, you know, I was like, all right, well, Snoot, uh, I'm pretty confident against Zerg, so I should be able to move on forward quite well. He knocked me down. I was very impressed with Snoot's play. I think he was uh, very well prepared. So uh, at the end of the day, I think the best way to sum it up is it's been a long day. It's been a long day for me. And I would agree, I mean, watching those games. Does he, does he really, does he feel that Snoot kind of messed this group up? <laughs> is that is that harsh to say? I mean, get it out of him, Will. 그러면 스누트 선수가 이전에 뭐 저기 정유수 선수랑 얘기했을 때도 비슷한 얘기가 나왔는데 스누트 선수가 어떻게 보면 좀 모두가 예상했던 거와의 이렇게 다른 결과를 보여줬다고 생각하시나요? 어, 뭐 스누트 선수가 그래도 잘하시는 거 알고 있었지만 그래도 저랑 윤종인의 이제 우승 스타리그 GSL 우승자고 최용화 선수도 요새 잘하고 계셔서. 그 윤종이랑 채용화랑 저만 생각했지 스누트를 너무 생각 안 하고 있다가 한방 맞은 것 같아요. <웃음> He says, yeah, well, you know, we're, of course, Rain and I, we're reigning champions in the two, like, most prestigious leagues right now in Korea. And then even Yonghwa, I mean, we consider him one of the top players, one of the top Protosses. So in my head, it was always between us three, which two goes forward, and then Snoot just shows up. I mean, not to say I disregarded him, yeah, but yeah. he wasn't really in the calculation for the top two, and he showed us all up, and he moved on first. So it was definitely very uh, unexpected. Oh, when, when he was playing against Snoot, and even against Rain, to be honest, he looked so flustered and so... Yeah. 
sweating, brushing his hair. He just kind of looked beat. Like what was going through his mind and against Newton afterwards as well. 그러면 이전에 뭐 스누트 선수 상대로도 그렇지만 이번에 정윤준 선수 상대로도 게임 중간에 계속 좀 뭔가 잘안 풀린다든지 좀 그런 얼굴 표정을 많이 보여주셨어요. 뭐 땀도 많이 흘리시고 좀 많이 힘들었던 것 같은데 부스 안에서 네. 게임 내에서의 좀 어떤 생각이 드셨나요? 어 게임 내적으로보다 이제 제가 지금 막 장염에 걸려서 좀 그, 어제부터 아무것도 못 먹고 있고 좀 컨디션이 아. 안 좋아서 예, 표정이 안 좋았던 거고 어 그리고 윤종이랑 할 때는 이제 잘하는 선수랑 최종전을 하다 보니까 좀 긴장해서 더 그랬던 것 같아요. Yeah, uh, so actually I've, I've been feeling under the weather, as I've said, I, I've actually got a little bit of a bug in my stomach, so that hasn't been going so well. I haven't actually eaten much uh, since yesterday, probably only a little bit here and there, maybe total one meal. Uh, so that's been affecting me a lot. I think that affected me a lot when I was playing against Snoot, I was just really fatigued. And then once it came down to going against Rain, I mean, having to play against a guy like Rain, uh, that just puts you on your nerves, and that really knocks me down a little bit. I, I was very anxious throughout the whole best of three. I actually wanted to really ask, uh, of course, there was the, the game one, the proxy gate, the really, really <laughs> kind of crazy build. And it always comes down to such fine micro. And as a bit of a, a Protoss novice myself, it's very interesting to watch these games because they're, they're so intense. But what I wonder is, are you really hoping for something? Is there a certain turning point there where your opponent, your opponent has to slip up in their micro? Or did Classic feel like this was a way of pressuring rain Just and really it, right. forcing mistakes? Or what, was it uh, trying to find, find a gap in the strategy? 그러면 저희 이번에 1경기에서 이제 프록시로 이렇게 오픈을 하셨는데 그때 정윤조 선수 상대로 그런 이제 프로토스로서 뭐 푸프전을 할때 그런 오프닝을 하시면 그게 전략적으로 여기서 이뭐한 실수만 있으면 상대가 무조건 이긴다 그런 생각으로 그런 전략을 사용을 하는 활용을 하나요? 아니면 그냥 일단 이걸로 통해서 압박을 좀 하고 그 다음에 다른 전략을 내가 꺼내야겠다 그런 생각으로 게임을 하나요? 어, 첫 경기는 좀 주도권이 중요하기 때문에 첫 경기여서 주도권 있는 빌드를 사용했고 잘 통해서 이제 쉽게 가나 했는데 이 세트는 좀 빌드가 제가 생각하는 대로 안 돼가지고 진것 같고 3 경기도 그렇게 어 1대1 상황에서 되게 긴장됐는데 딱 윤정이가 제가 할것 같아서 거기를 서치를 했는데 딱 전진 게이트를 해서 좀 쉽게 이긴 것 같아요. He says, well, you know, the first game in a best of match, it, the momentum matters so much. So I went yeah. with a build that can just seize that momentum on my own accord. You know, I don't have to wait for any other thing. Uh, so that's why I opened with that. And after I won, I figured, all right, that was the original plan. I'm going to win set number two also. Uh, but I think I slipped up in my build order a little bit in map number two. Uh, but game three, I figured, you know, when it came down to the wire, that Rain was actually going to come back with a proxy himself. So I searched right away. I found it. I scouted it. And yeah. there we go. That's how I shut what, it down. What was it that gave him that feeling, though? Is it because he's played a lot with him? Is it because yeah. of the kind of the, the intensity right. of the match? Like, wh what was it that told him he's probably going to do this? Good. 뭐 마지막 경기에서 왜아 정윤호 선수가 아마 여기 전전 게이트를 하겠다 왜 그런 생각이 드셨나요? 뭐그 상대를 잘 알기 때문인가요? 아니면 이게 정말 마지막 경기이기 때문에 한번 그런 Was it more just like a I'll check just in case type of move? 그러니까 그게 좀 확신이 있어서 서치를 하셨나요? 아니면 혹시나 모르니까 서치를 어, 하신 건가요? 확신보다 이제 제가 원래 제가 거기다가 던진 게이트 하려고 했는데 <웃음> 아. 1대1 상황이다 보니 좀 기, 이렇게 좀 네. 1대1이다 보니까 안 하고 운영을 했거든요. 그래서 그냥 거기를 한번 제가 하려고 했으니까 이제 서치를 한번 해봤는데 아. 운 좋게 좀 걸린 것 같아요. <웃음> he says, well, it wasn't really that I was sure that he was going to do it, but more yeah. that I actually considered it. When, when I knew right, the map, I was like, right, all right, right, maybe I should do that. And then I decided, all right, we're tied 1-1. Let's play with the safer build. Let's go for the macro right. game. But as I was scouting, I was like, well, if I considered it, Maybe he considered it too. Right. I found it. Luckily, I scouted it right away, and that's what gave me the upper edge in that last game. Well, thought processes of the pros, mate. Yeah, I, that's actually pretty neat. I mean, to hear that, you know, you look into your own mind to, to find see what it, he yeah, could do. What he could do. But the conclusion is, of course, class is moving on to the quarterfinals. Does this now mean Star League is better than GSL Ooh. when it comes to prestige? Because he won. 그러면 여기서 이제 스타리그 지금 최근 스타리그 우승자로서 GSL 우승자 상대로 이겼으니까 스타리그가 GSL보다 <웃음> 더 강하고 어려운 대회이다 그렇게 자신 있게 말할 수 있나? 어 이제 8강이기 때문에 한 4강 결승 가야 그런 말할것 같고 제가 승자전에서 진출한 게 아니고 최종전까지 아. 좀 힘들게 온 거여서 
Yeah, I guess if they says, well, you know, I think it's a little early to say that. Yeah. You know, it's just the quarterfinals. If I maybe move on to the semifinals or even the finals, then I would be able to say that. Also, it's not like I cruised through the group. Uh, I did have to struggle through the very last match. Yeah. So I don't think I'm in a position to necessarily but, so, what, so what the real answer is, is WCS beats GSL, I mean beats w, uh, WCS, beats yeah. Star League, Star League beats, beats GSL. GSL. That's the conclusion That's we have. That's the conclusion we have. <laughs> yep, WCS is the best. <laughs> uh, going stronger than SSL and GSL. But the bottom line for Classic, of course, after a long day, as he said, congratulations. And then we'll see you next time. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So congratulations to Classic. After a long day, again, he moves on forward. I'm hopefully he's feeling a little better after today. He'll be able to move on uh, into the bracket stage with a better condition.